Hey gang, Masada Youp here, one of the resident gun geezers on the uh, Wilson Cobb YouTube channel. The question's been asked by readers. What advice might we have for the older shooter with older hands, older trigger fingers, and older eyes? And the answer is, yeah, we've, uh, we've been where you are, and we do have a few answers. With the iron sight guns, one of the great benefits of today is the fiber optic sights. Uh, Wilson recently put these on my 2020 uh, Colt Python 3 inch, and they are a vast improvement of what, over what came on the gun. A big advantage is the carry optics. You know, you, the little red dot there is on the same plane as your distant focus when you're looking at the target or at the threat. And for older eyes, these can be a godsend. They are not necessarily a cure-all. Uh, Carl Wren at uh, KR Training in Texas, in his study of carry optics, found that the older shooters didn't necessarily always benefit as much as we thought they would. Some of them shot better with the iron sights simply because they were habituated and been shooting the iron sights all their lives. If you're having the, the vision problems associated with age, you're probably into corrective lenses. One thing we found early on was when you get to the age where you need multifocal lenses, the, the plan that you need for the front sight is generally about what you have for, on the reading plane. And on bifocals, they put the reading plane down here. So we've got normal walk around vision, target identified, whoa. And then you end up leaning back like this, what, what I call the Prussian officer technique. Die, scum. And a technique that takes you off balance is probably not a technique you want to fight with. If you come back forward in the typical fighting stance with the head coming forward, now the part of the glasses that we're seeing the sights is below your line of sight, and you're back to blind man with a gun, which last time I checked was the law school exemplar for recklessness. How do you fix that? Real simple. Go down to your optician, take your prescription, and tell them, I want the reading plane in the top, not the bottom. Now I've got normal walk around, recognize your friends, threat identified, front sight. It all keys in perfect, and all anybody's ever going to notice is that you've become a very intense reader. And yeah, it is that simple. Your local optician will probably do it for you if they don't. SSP Eyewear up in Washington, Google will get you there, will make glasses like that for you to your prescription. Other issues you're going to get are arthritis. The hands uh, get a little bit weaker. Mine have gotten a lot weaker over the years as I hit the three-quarter century mark. Uh, the bones uh, start protruding, the strength goes, and the range of movement goes. One of the first things I noticed was I was losing the ability on a 1911 to get my thumb in to uh, pop the mag release. It's real handy to do what I have here on my uh, Wilson uh, Beretta. Flip the, uh, the mag release from the left side to the right. Now you can do that with the standard part. What I found with the standard part was every now and then, because it was now exposed to the outside, if you bumped into something, it would accidentally release the magazine. With the Wilson component for the Beretta, it does not seem to do that. But it gave me a whole lot, gave me the fast reloads back. You may find that uh, as the fingers start twisting from arthritis, if you, with certain pistols, uh, start getting the, the finger bump right here. Simply for a day at the range, put a, a Band-Aid there as a prophylaxis. Okay, uh, don't mean to make jokes, but wrap that rascal. And the cushion there is, you know, gonna save you pain. Other, uh, other sight options that work if you prefer to stay with uh, metallic sights, but even the fiber optic isn't working. Advantage tactical. The advantage tactical sight is a pyramidal sight. You'll get a, an assortment of different color bars that you can install to see what pops best for you. You've got one color going up here that almost meets in a triangle, and the front sight is a little diamond shape that completes the triangle. It comes to the line of sight very, very fast, almost like running a red dot. But where you find if you need a precision shot, bring that right down until that diamond is perfect, and you're getting center X accuracy at 25 yards. 
Now another thing that may happen with older shooters, you might decide to change how you carry your pistol. If the shoulders start going on you, uh, particularly the rotator cuff area, getting the hand back to here can all of a sudden get pretty difficult. If you remember the, uh, the late machine gun expert, Peter Kokalis, he always carried cross draw butt forward on the opposite hip. The reason being, he had a shoulder injury and it was more accessible for him. You might find if this is starting to become awkward for you, the appendix carry that's discussed elsewhere on multiple Wilson combat videos, it's gonna be a whole lot easier for your hand to get to. Uh, in my case, I've got uh, two discs deteriorating at L3 and L4. That's for the sciatic nerve emanates, and I've been getting some sciatica on the hip where I've carried a gun since I was 12 years old. When that bothers me, I go to my orthopedic holster uh, shoulder rig. I find it very, very easy to, to adapt to, and it takes the weight off the hips and off the lumbar. You'll find lumbar injuries as well, the same thing can work. Back in 1990, I had a real bad lumbar problem. The doctor told me, you can't carry a gun there anymore. I said, well, I'm a cop, even on light duty, I've got to have the gun on. Uh, how about a shoulder holster? And he said, fine, but get one on each side. And I said, what? He said, oh yeah, the weight's got to be equally balanced. If it's all biased on one side, it's, it's going to affect your spine and you'll never heal. So I cobbled together a, uh, a rig, a twin shoulder rig, uh, two airweight uh, K-Frame Smith & Wessons. I felt like Sonny Crockett's older stranger brother. And finally, uh, through experimentation, I uh, kind of crossbred a Galco and a Rogers rig for a lightweight uh, Colt commander. Did uh, testing with the weights until the loaded commander was exactly the same weight as the two spare magazines, the Spyderco police knife, and the pair of handcuffs here. And that did balance absolutely equally, got me through the healing process until I could get back to carrying on the hip. So we all folks learned to, that, that old Marine Corps phrase, improvise, adapt, and overcome. And some of you younger folks out there with injuries may be able to adapt to that as well. You may not be as sharp as you were when you were 25 or 35, but stay on top of things, use the wisdom you developed over the years, and you'll still be able to stay in the game. We Gun Geezers will be back next time with a little bit more advice, depending on what it is you, the viewers, ask for. Thanks.